So guys, yesterday Red Bull, of course, absolutely dominated the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And once they got into a 1-2 position, obliterated everyone in Jeddah. Their pace was truly incredible. And they have proven that for the rest of 2023, and we saw this in Bahrain as well, they are going to be so, so, so hard to stop. And they very, very could. Um, or not very, very good. They very well could uh, win every single race in 2023. The only thing at the minute really holding them back is possible reliability trouble. But let's get into just why I believe that Red Bull could win every race this season with the type of pace they've got. And what we're going to get into is the average pace of all of the teams from when the safety car came in uh just before the midway point of the race until the end of the race so from about i think lap 21 until lap 50 and yeah it is not uh good um data put it that way if you're a ferrari fan mercedes fan aston martin fan or a fan of any of the other teams this type of data Sergio Perez from lap 21 until lap 50 was on average seven tenths of a second quicker than Fernando Alonso. Um, and I have to say, at the time, it was very surprising just the amount of pace that Perez had in comparison to Alonso. Because in the first stint of the race, it was pretty close between Perez and Alonso. Even when Perez repassed Alonso for the lead, Fernando was still sticking with him quite closely. So incredible speed compared to the Aston Martin Mercedes on average about a second off just yeah um incredible the amount of lap time they had over Mercedes and it's also incredible as I'm sure you guys would have known if you watched the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix just how much faster in a straight line the Red Bull was with DRS compared to the Mercedes without DRS it was absolutely terrifying to see the speed difference and i think even david croft in sky commentary said it was like watching f1 versus f2 and yeah it kind of was like that and ferrari were 1.2 seconds off on average from lap 21 to lap 50 and yeah ferrari's race pace was absolutely horrendous compared to red bull and even aston martin and mercedes considering ferrari were Still pretty or decently competitive in qualifying, but the pace drop off in the race was just incredible. But with Red Bull, why are this team just so quick right now? Well, we saw last season that, and it, they've carried over really the strengths of the car from last season, where they've got a design that, aerodynamically is just so so efficient they're able to be still very quick down the straights they're also able uh with the drs open to get more speed seemingly than other cars can with the drs open um but despite it being a slippery car in a straight line it provides immense amount of downforce and that's why this car at the minute just doesn't have any weaknesses there's nothing you can really do at the minute to stop Red Bull. Um, it's not like maybe Mercedes, say, back in their dominance period of 2014-15, where you could say, well, the downforce of that Mercedes car maybe isn't the um, the absolute best on the grid, or maybe it's not um, miles clear of the rest of the field like their engine was at the time. With this Red Bull car, it's similar to the Mercedes car of 2020, where there are no weaknesses and they are miles clear in pretty much every area downforce uh straight line speed really especially with their aero design and also looking after their tires which contributes to the brilliant race pace that red bull has which is why the first two races of this season they have dominated 2023 so much but with the rival teams I think the reason, a big reason why Red Bull could win every race this season is because the rival teams are not exactly in great positions right now. I mean, if we look at Ferrari, 
in qualifying trim, they're not that bad. In Bahrain, they maybe could have contended for pole position. And even in Saudi Arabia, despite a not so great lap from Perez, Leclerc wasn't, you know, a million miles off um, in the end. But the drop off that Ferrari have from qualifying to the race is monumental. It's the worst it's been from this team in a while. I know they've had race pace issues in the past. Obviously, last season. They had this quite a bit. Even a few years ago in like 2019, they had issues where they'd be so quick in qualifying and then in the race they would drop off with their pace quite a bit. But to be, you know, only a tenth of a second slower than Perez with Leclerc in qualifying and then be at best 1.2 seconds on average slower than Perez for a 30 lap period until the end of the race is incredibly alarming from the ferrari team and yeah those race pace woes from 2022 not only have they not gone away they're even worse now than they were last season so yeah ferrari are in a really bad spot and even if ferrari um you know in can fix those tire issues and you know have maybe in the second half of the season if they really improve this car much better race pace yes they do have a very strong power unit and their straight line speed is very good and is i guess comparable to red bull but this ferrari engine is just so unreliable i mean how many new power unit elements are ferrari taken on just in two races leclerc had a 10 place grid penalty already in saudi arabia for a third control electronics unit. That is incredibly poor reliability. And I think even um, you know, new power unit elements, I think, for Leclerc on, on uh with to do with other things as well. Energy store. Um, I think even was it with Carlos Sainz possibly, um, a new power unit completely. So even though Ferrari have got the power, maybe to compete with Red Bull uh, with their straight line speed, their engine is very unreliable i mean red bull they've got their reliability concerns as well but ferraris are way worse so like i said even if they fix their tire issues and their race pace improves they're still not very reliable to bet on actually winning a race this season and they could legitimately ferrari go the entire season without winning a grand prix and remember they haven't won a race since uh, july 2022 at the Austrian Grand Prix. So that drought is, I think, going to continue for quite a while. And then you go on to the Mercedes team. Now, Mercedes this season, obviously their car is not good enough. Aerodynamically, it is miles off the Red Bull. And couple that with the, um, the straight line speed deficit they've got to Red Bull, which is quite big. That's why they are at the minute about a second lap off the pace. Um, I would say definitely in race pace terms and probably uh, they will be uh, at the minute uh, or close to that in uh, qualifying terms as well. I will say though, they have done pretty well in the races so far. We're still picking up good points. I mean, they are level with Aston Martin on points in the championship. Aston Martin obviously in second. But with Mercedes... We can't look at them as possible race winning contenders really until they bring this new what is essentially going to be a B spec car and hope that that new car improves their performance by say three quarters of a second. That's the type of improvement they need to even be competitive even to a you know certain degree not a massive degree compared to Red Bull. So with Mercedes, we just have to wait and see. But it's going to take them quite a while, really, to get back to contending for race wins. And Mercedes have even come out and said, when it comes to bringing a new car concept with their you know, side pod and that, that they are looking more long-term rather than just this season. So they're already thinking pretty much at this point about 2024, and they should be. But that thinking may see them not win a race in 2023. And the only other team that could stop Red Bull and the, I'd say the second best team right now and the team with the second best car right now in Formula One 
is Aston Martin, but the Aston Martin car, despite being aerodynamically very good, lots of grip, great tyre management, those aren't issues at all, and they share those great strengths with Red Bull, they have quite a lack of straight line speed, which they can't really do anything about because they've got the Mercedes power unit. And we've seen in the last year or so, the Mercedes power unit is quite less powerful than, say, the Ferrari or the uh, Red Bull powertrain uh, cars, The obviously the Renault power unit as well. So that's going to be um, a, quite an issue for Aston Martin this season because if you look at the calendar, yeah, we've got certain races where power won't matter that much, but most of the races on the calendar, you're going to need a good donkey in the back, if you know what I mean, if you're going to, say, win a race, especially compared to Red Bull, who have got the complete package. So maybe Aston Martin may be able to contend for a victory at places like Monaco, Barcelona, Hungary, you know, Singapore, circuits like that where power doesn't really matter at all. But if they can't get the job done there, then even though they have quite a bit more time in the wind tunnel this season, I don't really see, unless Red Bull have their reliability troubles, which could happen. I mean, we saw obviously with Max Verstappen having a drive shaft failure in qualifying in Saudi Arabia. It is possible, but if that doesn't happen, it is just very, very hard to see whether or see that, you know, Red Bull are not going to... Um, or see a team, if I'm trying to put this in a better way, um, it's very hard to see a team other than Red Bull at the minute for the entirety of 2023 winning a Grand Prix. Another piece of data that definitely adds to the possibility of Red Bull winning every race this season is this. Now, this is not from the race. This is from qualifying the top speeds by team in the main speed trap. Sergio Perez, the quickest and this is obviously the team-by-team team ranking. You can see Ferrari not doing that bad, only for like, uh, five kilometers an hour uh, slower in the speed trap. In Bahrain, I think Ferrari were just a tad quicker. So again, like I said earlier, they are comparable. But look at Mercedes and Aston Martin. Uh, Mercedes almost eight kilometers an hour slower. Aston Martin about 10 kilometers an hour slower. And like I said with uh, you know Aston Martin a moment ago, with the type of circuits we've got on the calendar, you can't afford to be giving away 10 kilometers an hour in straight line speed if you have theoretically got a car that has as much grip as the Red Bull. So that is the main issue for the other teams. Now, let me know, of course, guys, in the comment section down below. Do you think Red Bull will win every race this season? If you do, obviously let me know why. Um, if they, you know, say win every race but one, let me know what race they don't win. Be very curious, of course, to hear what you guys have to say. In terms of my view, it's obviously very hard to say because we're at race two of the season, but given their speed and given how, even though the cars of uh, 2023 so far have not been that reliable in the first two races, Given how quick they are compared to the other teams and how they can really just manage things and manage their car quite easily out front, it is very possible. It is very, very possible that Red Bull win a free race this season. I mean, the closest team in recent history to come um, to come close to doing that was Mercedes in 2016. And the only reason they didn't win every race that year was because in Spain, both drivers crashed into each other. And then in Malaysia, of course, Hamilton had an engine failure. That's how close it was for Mercedes to get every race of 2016 won. So, yeah, it, it's going to be a very close run thing. And I think for sure it is a possibility. But it's hard for me to say at the minute that... Red Bull will absolutely win maybe every race or they absolutely won't win every race in 2023. But let me guys know in the comments, do you think Red Bull will win every race this season? Yes or no? And just, you know, share your thoughts on the incredible performance of this Red Bull car. And until my next video, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.